Hi, this is Miss Litton, and these are my wonderful, and here comes one now, AP Biologist, um, and we're, say hi. Hi. And we're gonna review chapter nine, the cell cycle and reproduction. So if you remember from when we first started this unit, definitely a big ticket item is the cell cycle. Not only what happens at each part of the cell cycle, but how it's regulated. We focused on um, controls of the cell cycle, what keeps it going, what stops it. We looked at the steps, um, not only of interphase, oh, but if I said the cell cycle consisted of two things, what two things would you say? Take the cell cycle, divide it in two. What are the two things? <laughs> yeah, they're not the same. Interphase and the M stage. And the M stage is gonna include both mitosis and cytokinesis. Good, okay. So we focused on the stages of interphase and then the stages of mitosis. And then we said what happens if we lose those controls and we talked about cancer. And then very briefly, we talked about binary division and prokaryotic cells. So as you're looking over this as an overview, tell the person sitting next to you what parts of this chapter most concern you that you think you need to focus on. Go ahead, talk. All right, so I want to hit the cell cycle first, okay? So if I asked you, of the cell cycle, and we looked at, and we focused on interphase, keep in mind, inter interphase is all of this. The majority of the cell spends, a spends its time in interphase. Then you can break each portion of interphase down. So if we looked here at just the G1, what would you say is a key word, two key words to explain G1? Oh, quiet ones. We are growing, yes, but what are we making more of? I heard it, organelles, yeah. You're, you're making more organelles at that time. That was the key thing we talked about there. So, and let's, let's make this make sense to us. What happened right before G1? I mean, literally right before G1? Cytokinesis. cytokinesis. What did cytokinesis do? Yeah, it took the one cell and took the contents and made it into two cells. So now we're down, right? We're a smaller, smaller cell and we have less stuff. So it makes sense that we need to grow and have more organelles, okay? Now we've grown, now we have more organelles. So then we're gonna move into the S stage. So what key thing is gonna happen during this S stage right here? DNA is replicating. Yes, DNA is replicating. So when we say that DNA is replicating, give me some other words, words that you know to describe a chromosome. What, what are we making more? Give me some other words. Sister chromatids, okay? You're forming the sisters. If you thought about it, if, if the DNA condensed at the end of G1, the chromatids would look singular. But if, if the DNA had condensed, and now we have two. So now the chromosome is going to appear, chromosome is going to appear like this, double. Okay? You just, it doesn't appear like this because it hasn't, it's still a mess all over the place. It hasn't condensed into those two sisters. So this DNA replication is occurring during that S stage, okay? And then what happens during G2? That, that third part of interphase, what's happening here? Protein. What? Protein. Yes, yeah. You're making more proteins. You're getting ready to do a whole big cellular division. There's probably some proteins that you're gonna need for that. Okay, all of that is underneath the umbrella, umbrella, umbrella of, of interphase, right? Then when we move into the M stage, the M stage is going to include both mitosis and cytokinesis. Both of those are, you're gonna ultimately divide things up, but mitosis is just focusing on the what? nucleus dividing and cytokinesis is on the cytoplasm and the rest of the cell. Okay, so you got the big big tickets in mind? Okay, now if on any of these stages you mess up, bless you, you want to stop and fix it. So you have different checkpoints that you're going through. So if we looked at the checkpoints right here, okay, 
we'd see this is a really big deal right here, this G1 checkpoint, and you have a highly suggested reading and thinking about that. Okay, so you want to stop the cell if there are any problems, give it an opportunity to fix itself, and if it can't fix itself, then we want to do what to it? Kill it, right? What do we call cellular suicide? Apoptosis. So this is a critical point because we just went from one cell to two cells, okay? Now, not only are we gonna stop and check, we're not gonna move forward until we, re we receive the signals that say, yes, it is okay to move into interphase. So we need to have our S cyclins increase. And they're gonna bind with the CDK, the cyclin dependent, what? Kinases to activate that next stage, okay? Then we will go through synthesis. Now, once we've taken that DNA and it was single, um, we took two, take that DNA that we had, and now we are making copies of that DNA so we have sister chromatids. Now we're ready to move into the G2 stage. Once again, you got another stopping point because we do not want to go forward unless that DNA is accurate. So you, you have another moment where it has to be analyzed, make sure the DNA was copied, correctly and do we have the signal? Do we have the ticket? Just like ticket in the airport, we talked about having a ticket to go to the next part. Not only do they security check you, they make sure you don't have any weapons and you forgot your water bottle and you're still bringing it on or your shampoo bottle is too big. You still have to also have a ticket, right? There's two parts to it, clearing security and having the ticket. Clearing security is gonna happen here and then the cyclins are like the ticket. And then you're, you're gonna have your M cyclins that are gonna have to build up in order to make, uh, bind with the cyclin-dependent kinases to move you then into that M stage. And then as you're going through that M stage, you wanna make sure that you're, everything is going according to plan there in anaphase, that all the sisters get separated, are we forming the right cells, okay? So those are your three checkpoints, okay? G1 and at G2 and in the middle of mitosis. Okay, clarifying questions you want to ask me about that. All right? Okay, um, and then we talked about how apoptosis is a normal um, process of killing off cells that aren't functioning well. We also looked at an example here where we showed the cyclins um, building up in order to bind to CDK, in order to move it to the next step, and then those break down. Okay, we are Pokemon, three number number. We should be getting hundies all the way through here. Two more of you could log on, let's go. Challenge yourself. Be a participant. Please tell me yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, 87th period. We'll get there. Yeah, the max for AP 7th has been two in a row. Two. You're halfway there. AP 7th has been like Oh, let's see who was. Good job, Evie. Oh, no, I was just saying. What is it, number, number? Three number, number. Three number, number. I don't know what. I don't even know how to say these names. Loaded. Loaded, what's that one? Loaded on and low tide. Toted aisle? Low tide is like the weird product with the sombrero. Toted aisle, too slow. Please make this a hundy. Yes. Ooh, Hi. Here's your go ahead run. Good job, Cyndaquil. Go ahead, 
seventh period or so. Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done. Okay, I just want to I just want to speak through these because I don't want to take the time and I want to keep reviewing. So what happens if a cell doesn't pass the checkpoint? It's gonna apoptosis. Good. Okay. When you look at the nucleus, most of the time it's spending is in what stage? Interface. Interface. And during that time, you will see some areas that are dark staining, and that's heterochromatin, and euchromatin is light staining, and it is the active DNA. And you can see that dense region inside the nucleus called the <coughs> nucleolus, where ribosomes are synthesized, okay? And when you get ready to do um, um, prophase, the transition in prophase, all that DNA is gonna wind itself up and the DNA will wind itself around protein spools, um, histone proteins, then those join together to form a nucleosome, and then those twist on and twist on and twist on until you have the rod-shaped chromosomes. So we talked about the organization of that. We also mentioned that the idea of being a haploid or a diploid organism, we are diploid organisms, so we have two copies, one from each parent. Okay, these, I wanna make sure you understand, these are not the two copies right here. That's not from mom and that's not from dad. Those are identical twin sister chromatids. This original chromosome could be mom's chromosome and then you would have also a dad chromosome that has replicated itself, okay? And in mitosis, we want every single chromosome that's in that cell to replicate itself, line up in the middle, and separate the sisters so that each cell gets a copy of those sisters. And so we said, um, in, for, for example, in this cell, how many chromosomes are in this top cell? How many can you see that? How many? Four. So every daughter cell we make is gonna have how many chromosomes in it? Four. Four. Okay, because it's a clone. You make an exact copy of that original cell. So every one of those is gonna duplicate and that's what we're seeing here. Now, referring to meiosis, which you're already learning about right now, this, if the red one came from mom and the small blue one came from dad, those would be referred to as what? Starts with an H. Homologous, oh, we didn't get into this in period three, but in period one we did. Homologous what? Pairs same size, same shape, and code for the same characteristics. Is this how the cell is going to look like in metaphase? No, you're exactly right. It's going to be what? Line. Yeah, a single line in metaphase so that each daughter cell that's formed gets one of the sisters, okay? So then all we're doing is, not seeing anything, all we're doing is, welcome, Hello. all we're doing is ascribing a certain point in mitosis in the process of division, its name. And the first one that has a lot of action going on is prophase. And if we remembered all the things that are happening there, the chromosomes are becoming what? Visible. Visible. The nuclear envelope and the nucleolus are doing what? Visible. Disappearing. Radiating microtubules, that's the spindle, right? And these are asters are forming. So those key events all occur throughout prophase. You can say early, middle, and late if you want to, okay? Key events for metaphase, they meet in the middle or the metaphase plate right here in the center. Anaphase, sister chromatids are separated. Telophase, you're reforming the nuclear envelope and the nucleolus around the chromosomes. And then cytokinesis is happening kind of overlaid with telophase, you're dividing it. Now, how is telophase different between plant and animal cells? Yeah, so they're gonna form that cell plate and a wall, whereas animal cells, what do you call that indent that you're doing right there? Sure. Cleavage, furrow, it's a furrow, just like if you're farming. All right. We did that, we did that, we did that. We talked about, we do mitosis for growth, to get bigger, okay, and for repair. Some cells and plant cells, um, say their stem cells, they will stay mitotic, they will keep doing mitosis forever, as long as they're growing at the shoots, um, either the roots or the tips of the shoots. 
the only, and we talked about my arms, my legs, mitosis, right, occurring all over our body, whereas myomyomyosis only happens in our what? For us. Ovaries and our testes, right? But mitosis is happening everywhere. And then there was another highly suggestive reading and thinking I want you to do. Okay, let's get some more hundies. We're at three. And then we just need to review cancer and we're done. Three number number. No, no, no. No, no, no. Bowman's daughter must have her car. She's sitting out there waiting for it. <laughs> Can you bring it to seven? Oh, yeah. Matt, sit down. What are you doing? Why are you wandering around the room? Sit down. What are you doing? standing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Geo did. Oh, one kid. One kid. Cindaquil. Jake. 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 We Jake. Jake. <laughs> Let's help Cyndaquil. Okay. Now, it says sister chromatids are separating. Is that DNA? It is, right? Anything that has to do with nuclear nuclear division. So if they are if they're separating, that's going to be an anaphase always, right? And it's nuclear material. If I said cytoplasm was separating, then you could pick um, cytokinesis. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Gong. Good job. Yeah. One. Yeah, that could have been eight. This 
<laughs> next one could have been the go-ahead run. I'm just saying. <laughs> Don't ask me. I do not know Pokemon. Yeah, but what's the difference? The only reason I have Pokemon is because of my brother. Oh. Sugar, we have. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Do you really think I'm going to put the ball in the starter? Wait, it's a trick. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's talk about it. Okay. Nuclear membrane breaks down. Remember our song? Let's go through the song whole thing. Whole thing's called what? Mitosis. The, look to me. Chromosomes become, oh, what's the first page called? Prophase. The chromosomes become visible. The nuclear envelope, which would be the same thing as the nuclear envelope, right? And the nucleolus disappear, which would be like breaking down. Radiating microtubules, asters. They meet in the middle at metaphase away at anaphase to nuclei at telophase cytokinesis. Good. All right. <laughs> Whoa, did I skip that? Okay, hurry, hurry. We have to have cancer. Meow. <laughs> abnormal growth of cells. We talked about normal cells have density dependent inhibition or contact inhibition. When they get too many or too crowded, they stop growing. They also have anchorage dependent. Yes? So density dependent is good. Yes, that's normal. Normally if you have your cells and they're starting to feel crowded, they're like, oh my gosh, let's stop. There's no room. Okay? It's like a self-regulatory mechanism. It's, it's getting feedback to know that you're crowded so no more, should be, no more cells should be formed. Okay, so that's normal, but when you have cancerous cells, they, they don't have the anchorage dependence, meaning they don't have to be adhered to some base layer, and they don't exhibit contact inhibition. They just keep growing and growing and growing. Now, if this stays localized in this one little area, we would call it what? Benign. Benign. But if it gains access to the rest of your body, then it's what? It, it could be malignant. And when the act of spreading is for it to metastasize. Okay, what kind of things does it need? It needs nutrients, it needs access to get into the rest of your body, and two good systems to use to get access to the rest of your body are your what and what systems? Lymphatic, Lymphatic system and your circulatory, circulatory system. system, right. So they're clearly defined normal cell regulation. Okay, normally the cell would get feedback and say stop, and it's not. 
and it has the ability to it's gain the characteristics where it can move into other um, areas. When you look at a um, cancer cell, it looks different. A whole bunch of DNA in there, and you know the DNA is messed up, right? Okay, abnormal number of nuclei, very small cytoplasm. And we know it ultimately boils down to bad genes, code for bad proteins, cell cycle is out of control. Um, when it gains access to other places and more nutrition, it's, it has those mutations. It has the ability to do angiogenesis, which is get to getting blood vessels to grow towards it, so it has access to other places. We talked about that you could kind of break it in normal cell and cancer cell, and this would be a good thing to kind of be able to differentiate, oh, <laughs> to know, okay? So they're non-differentiated. Make that make sense to you, because it doesn't matter where they go. It's not like they're a specific type of cell that can only function in that one area. By not being differentiated, they can function in many different environments within your body. Abnormal nuclei, you know it's abnormal because you have bad DNA coding for bad proteins. They're not dying. They're not undergoing apoptosis when they should. When they're crowded, they still keep growing. They're multi-layered, disorganized. It's not in a mass that is doing a certain purpose, like a tissue in one area. And they can spread and get other blood vessels to grow towards them. And we said it all boils down basically to two genes, two, two categories or groups of genes. proto genes are in a position of power. And they are normally doing good things, controlling the, controls, controlling the cell cycle. But if they go bad, they can promote the cell cycle when you don't want it to move forward. That in and of itself would not give you cancer because hopefully when you have cells that are growing out of control, you have them commit what? Apoptosis, Apoptosis right? So what can, when cancer happens is when the proto-oncogenes become oncogenes and the tumor suppressor genes are not doing their job getting rid of them. So we talked about examples of proto-oncogenes about regulating the cell cycle. And we said, they're saying go, go, go. It's like stepping on the yeah. gas. And then we said, oh, we can remember one. What one sounds like gas? RAS, okay? RAS run fast, I don't know. Okay, so the RAS DNA codes for the RAS protein, and there are over like 100 different categories that could cause these problems, but the RAS one is involved in a lot of different cancers. And normally, it's triggered by a receptor, once a growth factor is bound to it, and the RAS then triggers um, that gene expression in maybe making a cycle or something to move the cell forward. But in this case, this RAS is not functioning correctly and it's triggering the cell cycle even though, no, it, it, it hasn't received a growth factor of any kind. Okay, so that's um, a proto-oncogene normal and then here it's coding for a bad protein and now it's an oncogene. And then as far as tumor suppressor genes that we talked about, for examples there, okay, they're supposed to bring it to a halt and P53 I think P or pause or something, um, P53 gene is what causes the cell cycle to stop, assess what the DNA is, if it needs to be repaired, if it can't be repaired, kill the cell. And when you have um, inactive or destro destroyed or missing P53 genes, which is like in half of all cancers, you're not wiping out those bad um, kernels. Yes? So P53 is the Pardon? It's a tumor suppressor, okay. yes. RAS is your example of an oncogene, okay? Or, you know, it's a proto-oncogene as long as it's f functioning, right? It's fine. But when it makes um, a type of protein that doesn't need to be triggered by a receptor, then you have a problem, then it's become an oncogene. And then P53 genes are fine. They're good. That's a normal part of the cell cycle is to stop, regulate, make sure things are going well. <laughs> but if it's not doing its job, then... It's like an assassin that's shooting blanks because its job is to stop and analyze, are we, did we replicate the DNA correctly? Did we do mitosis correctly? Can we move forward? And if we can't move forward, then we gotta, we gotta not take you out and have apoptosis and that is not occurring. We also said besides failure of DNA repair, there's an enzyme, telomerase, which is keeping um, chromosomes normally get shorter every cell division, the part of the chromosome that's just involved in the structure of the chromosome. It's supposed to get shorter 
every division. And telomerase, telomerase, an enzyme, keeps them at that standard length. And so that's a signal to move forward, okay, in the cell cycle as long as your chromosome is longer, okay? And we talked about ways you could get it um, cancer from your DNA that you inherit. It could be from your environment. And then we talked about all the different kinds of tests. Don't, if it's not in the notes on that, you don't need to worry about that. I just went over it just more for you when we're talking about cancer. You want to know how could I get it and what could I do about it, you know, or how could I find out. Um, then the very last item that we talked about was, since that was all had to do with mitosis and cells that are eukaryotic and linear chromosomes, um, prokaryotic cells, bacteria and archaea, they just do binary fission. Their single circular chromosome replicates and then it divides into two cells. And I think I just had a couple questions on that. And this was that tricky question, just the way it's worded, okay? And I understand that. Um, but you still got a <laughs> Nobody knows that. And you guys, my strong suggestion to you is to keep those straight. Like, you know, what's, what's in a normal cell? A normal cell has an operational P53 gene, and it has oncogenes, proto-oncogenes that are working fine. You have, you know, um, an operational RAS is fine. When it's not operational, that's bad. So make sure you have examples for both. I don't know if that made sense. I'm really curious. Been grading. There are your tests right there. Been grading. I'm halfway through period one, and I think I'm a little more than halfway through period three. Are you satisfied? A lot of them I am. Some are not. <laughs> Yowza. Okay, what did somebody put? Okay, so somebody threw in the D. It says when cancer, when cancer occurs, it could be a result of the cells no longer continuing the cell cycle. Is that the problem why you have cancer? No, it's because you keep continuing the cell cycle and you're not stopping. You don't have that contact inhibition. No guarantees about tomorrow. I have another meeting after school today that goes till late. This question, it says, which of the following is not a characteristic of cancer cells? So when you see that, Ori, when you see that as you read it, what? how should you read it? Which of these is not? It means all the rest, what? Are, are a characteristic. So do they undergo angiogenesis? Yes. Why would they undergo angiogenesis? What would be the purpose of a cancer cell doing that? To spread itself. To spread itself by doing what? Drawing in blood vessels, making more blood vessels grow to it. Do cancer cells tend to be non-specialized? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's a characteristic. Do they tend to undergo apoptosis? No, that's why they're cancer. So that is not a characteristic of it. Do they have abnormal nuclei? Yes. Can they spread to other areas? Yes. Okay, so the other four are characteristics of cancer. Whenever you read a question, which is not, what's the exception? Just go, okay, all of these are good, or all of these are examples of it. You have to, you know, work through each one. Of course, this is tricky because it's a map. Could you find an abnormality in a receptor? Yes. yes. Okay. 
Could you find an abnormality in a signaling protein? Yes. RAS would be an example of a signaling protein, right? Because it's taking information from the receptor and saying, telling the nucleus, hey, go ahead, right? And then could you have an abnormality in your DNA? Yes, all of those things. Hi. All of those things. Aw, almost. Okay, and the answer is, okay, and there's your cell cycle again if you want it, and then that is the end. Okay, don't step too late. Make sure you understand the parts of the cell cycle, stages of mitosis, the controls, characteristics of cancer cells, and understand the two types of genes, proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. And if it's late, go make yourself a piece of toast, but don't stay up too late. Do you have a message for them? Stop studying, Max. Stop studying, Max.